Um, before I go on, I'll be speaking a little while later, but I would first like to introduce to you the Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences at the American University of Georgia, Dr. Uh, uh, Mahmoud Anatelli. and the Department of Arabic and Translation. Um, I welcome you to AUS and to the first UAE Conference on Storytelling, Travel Writing, Seafaring, and uh, from cross-cultural perspective. This is a very interesting uh, topic. When, I, when, when, when uh, Richard and the Noha first, uh, when David and the Noha first approached me about the conference, um, uh, we started the discussion about the minute I saw the title. So this is something very interesting and, and it is related to uh, uh, you know the United Arab Emirates and especially Sharjah has been you know the crossroads of the uh, uh, modern uh, world and, and um, it is it is really you know uh, aligned with what we do here at AUS. So I want to welcome you to AUS and uh, I want also to uh, take this opportunity to thank you so much for the support. Uh, for this conference and for uh, coming to AUS and to participate in, in this very exciting conference. Uh, it is a great pleasure to see the Charter Museum Authority and uh, the Arab German uh, Young Academy of Sciences and Humanities and the Department of Arabic and Translation in the College of Arts and Sciences to come together to organize this wonderful conference. This is really a, a great effort and, and it is something that we always, uh, uh, you know, seek to to do at at uh, AUS. I'm also very impressed by the breadth and the depth of the issues that will be presented and discussed in this conference, such as travel and imaginary journeys, seafaring and travel, travel, um, and many other topics. This conference, you know, comes um, as I said at the time when UAE is becoming again uh, the crossroads of uh, the modern world. And organizing such a high caliber international conference with the quality of speakers and participants is many is one of many examples that show that we are committed uh, to the fulfillment of His Highness Dr. Sultan's enlightened vision about the role of education and academic research in the advancement of our society and in shaping uh, of the lives of our children, and for AUS also to become a center of research in an emirate devoted to the making of history and academic excellence. And uh, while you are here at AUS, I invite you to tour AUS and to visit our departments and our colleges and visit our wonderful facilities and, and uh, see what we do. You know, that will give you maybe a very good idea or maybe, you know, um, uh, uh, um, you know, will, 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 will uh, Provide you with, with uh, uh, you know, um, information about what we do here at AUS. Uh, uh, you know, we have a mission, uh, uh, and, and as I said, you know, this is in line with the uh, vision of His Highness to become a leading institute in the Arab world. And uh, right now, we are in the uh, very important uh, uh, period of, of, of uh, you know. Uh, here at AUS of becoming a comprehensive research institute and His Highness has provided us with all the resources to become a comprehensive research institute. This is a very exciting time for AUS and we are always looking for collaboration. Um, so please, you know, uh, talk to the uh, faculty at AUS, talk to the head of the department and uh, uh, explore ways of collaboration for uh, new projects uh, and, and uh, also new programs. I want to thank the conference chair, Dr. Muha, and uh, also Dr. Uh, David Winston, and uh, the Charger Authority. 
Agaya and uh, members of the organizing committee for their hard work and dedication. And I uh, wish to thank all the participants who contributed to the success of the conference and I wish you a very pleasant stay at AUS and in Georgia and a very productive and successful meeting. Thank you. Okay, if you will permit me to expand a bit, and in fact, where I want to start is exactly where the, the dean left off. First of all, I'll introduce myself for those of you who haven't met me yet, although many of us have been in correspondence. Uh, I'm David Wilson, I'm the head of Arabic and translation studies at the American University in Georgia. And I think it's fitting that we should be holding a conference uh, of this uh, type in the UAE in general, specifically in Georgia. Georgia is, as you probably all know by now, the cultural capital of the United Arab Emirates. Uh, yeah, due in part to its very active uh, commitment to uh, the building of and presenting of museums, but many other things as well. Um, it, it, it turns out that it is also uh, its history is specific to our the theme of our conference because it happens to be the location of the first seaport and the first airport in the Emirates, which were at the time not even called the Emirates, they were called the Crucial States. This is a name I don't particularly enjoy, but that's what they were called. But as far as we can determine, the civilizations of this part of the Arabian Gulf have been engaged in seafaring and in gaining a living from the sea since prehistory. There's archaeological evidence that gives uh, uh, proof of human settlement in this, directly in this part of the world, since, uh, dating back 8,000 years before the present. And recent paleoclimatological studies have indicated that the climate was not merely conducive to human habitation, but highly attractive. And the same studies also indicate that the climate of this part of the world, in fact, the Arabian Peninsula as a whole, undergoes cyclical changes where sometimes it's it's uh, cool and wet, and other times it's warmer and dry. So this particular period that we're living through now, with these lovely, the lovely fall weather that we'll, we'll be experiencing for the next few days, is simply a temporary condition. And things might get wetter again in the future. Whatever the case may be, it seems that people have come to the area and perhaps, and perhaps attracted by the climate and have remained in it throughout the wet and dry, or as we like to say in Arabic, they've not only remained but they've flourished. UAE is the locale of several important archaeological sites, giving evidence for rich trading centers along the coast and the inland. And the Emirate of Sharjah itself boasts one of the more important of these, but not very far from here, it's a few hour drive away from the inland site called Baliha nowadays. It's still the site of um, modern habitation, but it has been the site of human habitation for, for maybe 8,000 years, maybe longer, we don't know. The evidence also points to it having been an important and affluent locus of overland and sea trade the trade extending as far north as Mesopotamia and as far east as, as China and certainly as far west as the Yemen and perhaps further. Where Maliha especially begins to attract my own interest is that, is that not only is it a site, an interesting archaeological site with evidence of, of an affluent civilization that grew up there, there we've also been finding inscriptions written in the South Arabian script, it's called the Musnad in Arabic. Um, some of that, we can't quite tell what the languages are. Others of them are written in, uh, in Aramaic, which was the lingua franca of the entire Middle East for a thousand years before Islam. And it so happens that one of the papers of this conference will address something about the Aramaic culture in the Arabian Gulf in the pre-Islamic era. I could go on at length about the languages of the area, if you ask me, because that happens to be my area of interest. Uh, 
but I won't because, except to observe that language and writing, of course, means history. And in the light of history, the, Gulf, uh, the, the, the historical light of the Gulf becomes brighter with the coming of the Islamic era. And we know that Islam and the people who were carrying Islam with them reached here very, very early in the Islamic era. You can only guess at the involvement of earlier inhabitants of our region in seafaring, but we know indisputably that people of the region have been gaining their livelihoods from the sea since the beginning of the Islamic era, both as a source of food and as an avenue of trade. Several of the papers at this conference will address such matters specifically, some looking at activity in, the, in and accounts of trade and seafaring in the Gulf itself, and some others will be looking at the wider context, especially maritime activities, and accounts thereof in the wider context of the Indian Ocean. And this brings us to the second theme of the conference, conference which is travel writing. Travel writing, in writing of any kind, of course, is history. There are eyewitnesses' accounts of the Southern Arabian Peninsula from writers of late antiquity that mention the cultures and civilizations of the, of the Arabian Gulf. And it so happens that we'll be fortunate that some of the papers of our conference, uh, while not extending as far back as the prehistory of the Arabian Gulf, do extend as far back as late antiquity and accounts of this part of the world in late antiquity, by which I mean uh, Hellenistic and Roman eras. Once history begins, of course, travel writing never ceases, ceases, and we will hear in the next few days accounts of sea voyages from late antiquity to the modern era. As for storytelling, that, of course, is an activity in which people have been engaging, and which people have found engaging since well before any physical record of human language ever existed. And it has probably been engaged in by human beings since humans have existed. So we were then about to embark upon a journey of our own through a sea of discovery about the mingling of cultures that travel and trade and bring civilization. And we will discover, or rather, we, should, we will rediscover the centrality of the, Amer the Arabian Gulf and our own place in it to the telling of tales about travel and seafaring and the meeting of cultures. And as I said before, given the opportunity, I might go on and on and on and on and on about the subjects involved in our conference, especially where they interact with questions of the languages of the region. But I must stop now, so as to take some of my allotted time to engage in another extraordinarily pleasant duty, which is to acknowledge and to thank all of those who have worked together to bring, this, bring us to this moment. And throughout the planning of this conference, there's always been sort of an implicit discussion about whose name do we put first when we talk about the sponsors and the people involved. Uh, and it's not a, a question that I can solve. But I will solve it for the moment by starting at home and thanking the people at the American University of Chargers who have been involved with this. First, by extending a sincere word of thanks to our Dean, Dean Mahmoud Matawi, who is the Dean again, as I tell you, of the College of Arts and Sciences. First, for his immediately agreeing to the idea of the conference when we first presented it to him, but also to his continued, for his continuing support of the project as it developed and came to fruition. And I'd like to mention a personal work for myself that Dean Ahmed is an inspiring and dedicated leader of the college. And it has been a pleasure for me to work with him for the last two and a half years while I've been here. And it's also, of course, a pleasure to work with the colleagues in the Department of Arabic and Translation Studies. And to them, especially those colleagues on the conference organizing committee, I also extend my grateful thanks for their tireless and it has been tireless and unceasing work in organizing this event. Particularly and foremost, I have my greatest thanks to our colleague, Naha Sha'ar, who has truly been working tirelessly, tirelessly uh, for the organization of this conference, while at the same time working on other projects of her own, one of which had to be completed last night. It has nothing to do with the conference, it has to do with the book she's writing. So while she's been organizing the conference, she's been writing books as well. I also like to single out uh, Ahmed Siri, who has been working behind the scenes, especially in the facilitation of the visas and the security clearances, and to 
my assistant and to our assistant, Lamia Hanani, who also has worked diligently and with the utmost professionalism in keeping track of the tiniest details of the organization of this conference. From there, we can move to the Arab German, German Young Academy of Sciences and Humanities, which we all know now affectionately as ACTA. And first to Christian Fromm, who will be addressing us in a few minutes, and to Beate Ulrike Masala, who were, along with Maha and me, involved in the selection committee. We received more than 60 abstracts for this conference, of which we chose 25 or so. I don't remember exactly what the number is now. We were guessing this morning it must be about 25. Um, it's been a pleasure to work with them as briefly as we have, and it's all been until today by way of Skype and the wonders of modern technology. But we did find while we were selecting the committee, the abstracts, that all of us think alike when it comes to choosing the papers for this conference. There were no disagreements whatsoever, which uh, I think is an unusual thing, and it speaks to the goodwill and the professional scholarship of the people involved. And I'd also like to thank Nicola Meissner from AGDA, the AGDA Berlin office, whom I've heard so much about but did not meet until yesterday. Uh, and we thank her very much for her support. And also, since we're talking about that, we must thank the German Federal Ministry of Education and Research, who provides us funding for AGDA. And finally, I owe the greatest debt of thanks to the Scharger Museum of and a few people, all the people involved with it, all, all, whom I've only met a few, but the consummate professionalism about that organization shows through in our interaction with all of these people. And first, I would like to extend my thanks to Alia and Sahadi, who is the manager of education and Inter interpretation department of the Shanghai Museums of Authority. She has been our main point of contract, the contact since with the authority since we began. Um, planning this conference, and in fact, even before we began planning this conference, we were uh, dealing with her with other educational things. And just by dealing with her, uh, the professionalism of the authority comes through. And in fact, through all of our meetings, we've now in fact become friends as well as colleagues in this enterprise. And of course, I would like to thank uh, Manal Altaya, and I started this session of thanks with the talk of starting at home, and I'm in a sense welcome, welcoming her back home. Uh, she is the Director General of the Sharjah Museums Authority, and I will be inviting her to come and speak um, in just a minute. But ultimately, we also need to thank uh, Sheikh Dr. Mohammed bin Mohammed al Qasimi. I say Sultan, Sheikh Dr. Sultan Mohammed bin Al Qasmi, who created the vision for this oasis of learning in the beautiful Emirati Desert. And his family of Qasmi or Qawasim have been intricately associated with Sharjah and the Northern Emirates. Uh, and I must admit personally that uh, although I've known about Sharjah since I first began the study of Arabic more than 30 years ago, um, what I know about the modern state of Sharjah and the pre-modern state of Sharjah comes almost entirely from reading his own writings. Uh, uh, and we, I should end then by saying that we also have a paper that will build upon his PhD dissertation in writing about the early history of the crucial states, of the history of the crucial states before they became the Emirates. And I think that that is extremely exciting and he himself has done what all scholars hope to do, which is to produce a study upon which a whole body of scholarship can be built. And it looks like that will be beginning at this conference. So now, if you will, let me close and invite Manala Atoya to the stage for a few remarks from the Sharjah Museum's authority. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning. Uh, 
Um, everyone, it's a pleasure and an honor to be here today. I will keep my remarks relatively short because I know we're probably very excited to get going with this unbelievable conference. Um, as mentioned earlier um, by Dr. David, um, I was the same in that when I saw the title for this conference, I was absolutely ready to sign my name up for it and have our authority uh, get involved. Um, it is so pertinent to the work that Sharjah does and the history of Sharjah, which um, Dr. David very eloquently described in many, uh, with some, a lot of detail. Um, so I'd like to, again, thank you uh, for approaching us to be part of this important conference, uh, which brings together passionate researchers and professors and professionals um, together. Another uh, successful and important collaboration uh, between us and the university um, just reaffirms for us the strong bond that we have uh, between our two institutions. So it really is a privilege for me to, to be here today in the University City of Sharjah, where His Highness uh, Sheikh uh, Dr. Sultan Mohammed Al Qasimi, uh, the ruler of Sharjah, envisioned a city of culture and knowledge, establishing more than 18 museums offering students and researchers and the general public an opportunity to engage with and learn from a diverse collection, um, which includes collections of maritime heritage, Islamic uh, art and history, um, contemporary art, modern art, archaeology, heritage, it goes on and on. Sharjah's commitment to culture and education is unparalleled. This will be evident to our respected uh, audience sitting here with us today when we visit a lot of our historic uh, institutions and our museums. Tomorrow I believe we'll be going to the Sharjah Museum of Islamic Civilization and also ending your, your time with us at the Sharjah Maritime Museum. And our guides and curators will present stories dating back to Abdel Malik uh, Ibn Mawan uh, era during uh, the Mumid uh, dynasty and ending with stories from the sea, which played a key role in the development of the coastal cities over six, uh, 8,000 years ago. Um, our dedicated researchers, uh, led by um, my colleague, Fatma Mahiri, who uh, is here with us today, um, dedicated a tremendous amount of time and effort in collecting oral history uh, from the senior citizens and residents of the UAE. Um, which we in turn use to enrich our displays for our visitors um, and at all ages. Um, for we really, at the end of the day, are all storytellers. Um, we all live in a network of stories, and there isn't a stronger connection between people than storytelling. Recent projects inaugurated by His Highness this year included the reopening of Beit and Nabuda, which is one of Sharjah's largest and oldest houses that date back to 1845. This uh, historic house was built um, uh, with, um, you know, uh, sorry, indigenous, let's say, um, materials, um, coral stone mainly, and is a unique example of uh, a grand coastal home. And when we stand in that house tomorrow, you will see how the sea has played such an important role in bringing different cultures together, because the uh, the original owner of that house um, was a, a pearl trader himself, and with his wealth, of course, was able to build that house, but also with his travels um, to India and other countries, Iran, etc., he was able to uh, bring um, so much knowledge, information, interaction uh, with different people, and those stories uh, you will see in some of uh, some of the displays in the museum, but I also want to emphasize that with any museum, you know that you're only seeing about five or ten percent of the information that's actually co you know, collected. Obviously, we don't put everything on display um, because it, most people don't read that much in a, in a museum space. But what for me, I think what I want to say, which is so important, is that at least we are collecting information, and the data is there in our archives for use in the future or in other ways, whether it's in publications or conferences in the future, um, and perhaps even new, new museum institutions where that um, information would be relevant. 
I wanted to, uh, before I end, uh, just use a quote that I, I saw the other day and I thought was really wonderful uh, by Ruth uh, Sawyer. It says, to be a good storyteller, one must be gloriously alive. It is not possible to kindle fresh fires from burnt out embers. I have noticed that the best of the traditional storytellers whom I have heard have been those who live close to the heart of things, to the earth, the sea, wind, and weather. They have been those who know solitude and silence. They have been given unbroken time to feel deeply, to know the power of the spoken word. Finally, Charge Museum's authority is proud to be committed to supporting academic institutions and researchers. We thrive to have our collections available in support of students in all majors, as well as strengthening our partnership and practice. So um, I have to say Dr. David did a great, um, he, he helped me here with thanking a lot of people personally by name, so I won't have to do that. So I would just like to say in general, um, to thank all the teams um, of AUS, of IKEA, and of course the Charge Union Authority. And I do also want to particularly thank Ayyad Rehaina Azabi. Um, she has been instrumental in helping us put this together and has been um, personally a very um, wonderful for me because it's great to be involved in something where you, you don't have to worry about anything. <laughs> you feel everything is going to be done um, perfectly and um, you just need the updates and it's, it was smooth sailing the whole time throughout this process and that was really wonderful for me and I, I can't thank her enough for that. Um, and I'm excited to see what the day holds. So thank you again so much for having us today and we're honored to be um, partnering with you in this uh, important conference and we look forward to the rest of the day and the next few days um, that you're here. Thank you and uh, have a great day. Like a contestant who has a good view from Manella Fudge and Marks and Athens. Well, I was involved a lot, in a, a lot of planning for this up until the beginning of the fall semester. I suddenly became very busy in the fall semester, and at that point, I just let other people do whatever they're doing. The organization from all sides has been tremendously good. And I just sit and watch and catch people for word of advice and sometimes sign something. That was that. Um, our last speaker today, Anne, will be come, come from the other, the, the third uh, party from the conference organizers, and that is Dr. Christian Fromm, who will be speaking on behalf of Fox Acura. Dear Dean Aram Torabi, that's right, uh, Excellency Dyer. Dear Professor David Williamson, dear colleagues, and I would like to address you in these last opening remarks in the two roles I have to fulfill right now. First, as one of the organizers, second, as one of the members and representatives of the Arab German Young Academy, you already heard it more than once, Agia. And yet, these roles are not that different at all. The idea for this conference started in October 2017 in Amman, Jordan, during the meeting of the Agia Working Group Carmen Heritage and Coming Challenges at the General Assembly. The idea was to have a closer look at these, on the one hand, rather different, but on the other hand, uh, at the same time, closely intertwined literary genres of uh, travel writing and storytelling from multiple perspectives in an interdisciplinary, interchronological and cross-cultural approach. It is one of the great benefits of being a member of IDEA that you can make these ideas become reality relatively easy. Yet, there were different tasks ahead of us before we could finally invite you to this conference. The first task was to find the right location. And uh, Charter was the perfect spot for several reasons. First of all, 
It is uh, Dr. Muma Aysaha's residence and workplace, and so she could immediately get into contact with the American University of Charger and the Charger Museum's authority. Both institutions were eager to help right from the start, immediately gave their full support for this conference, and in the end made this event possible. Thank you very, very much for this. With this active support, NUVA and countless other helping hands, which I have not met by now, but I am very much looking forward to it, managed to organize a tour program on our second day, as well as the events on our fourth day, which perfectly fits to the topic of the conference itself. Moreover, there are many culinary delights ahead of us, with, uh, with much local food, as Nuha has promised, and I'm very much looking forward to this as well. So, just to mention the food. And uh, this is a specific of Agia as well. So, you, if, you want, if you want to get to know uh, how different the food in the Arabian world is, come to Agia and we'll get to know everything. So, uh, you get the specifics as well. Last but not least, Charja itself is an excellent setting for the conference since the Persian or Arabian Gulf has played a vital role as a cross cultural melting pot throughout history up until today, providing us with some inspiring geographical context to talk about travel writing and storytelling. Therefore, we, the organizers, are very thankful to the friendly and forestalling representatives of the American University of Charter, the Charter Review Authority, and to the United Arab Emirates for having us here. Actively contributing to the program and giving us the opportunity to talk about an interesting and multifaceted topic. A second task was to find some participants from different fields of research willing and interested to join our conference. Therefore, we are very thankful for all these different applications that arrived us, from which, unfortunately, due to financial and temporary reasons, not all could be invited. In the selection, the selection process itself, Professor Williamson, for instance, laid a very active uh, part and we are again very thankful for the help and the time granted. Now we are proud, proud and thankful that scholars from in order of their appearance, Tunisia, India, Spain, Lebanon, the Netherlands, Charja itself, England, Italy, the United States, Egypt, Germany, Qatar, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia and Syria followed our call for participation making this conference quite a worthy topic on mobility and cross-cultural intellectual life itself. A third and last task was funding and organizing the flights, hotel rooms, etc. etc. Therefore, we are very grateful to the Magia office at Berlin for organizing uh, for the organization of flights, the accommodation, the layout of the program, and so much more. Moreover, we are very thankful again to the American University of Charja and the Charja Museum Authority for the financial support and the organization of the events and the location. Finally, we are grateful to the Federal Ministry of Research and Education in Germany, which in its close collaboration with APIA granted the necessary funding to make this conference itself become reality. It is a, the declared goal of the Arab German Young Academy to bring scholars from different countries and different fields of research together to speak about a common topic from different angles of the spectrum. And with a view on the program ahead of us, I am very much looking forward for this goal to be realized in the upcoming days. Thank you very much for your attention.
the uh, conference organizer, or at least the head of the department that organized the conference, talk a little bit about logistics. I won't talk about everything, and those will be uh, made clear throughout the days of the conference, but the first order of business must be to talk about some cancellations. This always happens at conferences, and some of them, most of them came to us uh, after the conference program was printed, so they couldn't be removed. And next to, no, it's not the next two, the panel, the panel two, both of those conferences, both of those papers cannot be uh, delivered because the, the uh, people who are to deliver them are not able to attend. So what I'm going to do is also take my prerogative as the conference organizer to announce that instead of starting at 9 30, which we can't do now, we'll have a short coffee break and we'll try to start about 10. And then uh, we'll have a fairly long lunch break in which you can go around and look at the campus if you like, or I think you know, there's a great tour of the library if you like that. And uh, we'll be back in the hall across from here, which is lecture hall and is directly across from us, right now where all the coffee buildings are, at uh, 1400, which is 2 o'clock after lunch. So at this point, we'll have coffee and we'll try to start with our first panel around 10, half an hour late. And thank you all for your attendance and for your attention. And very good.